Uranium prices have fallen sharply, but is the market overreacting? DeepSeek's claims of reduced AI power and demand are questionable, stockpiles are running low, and global nuclear expansion is underway. Could this be a buying opportunity? Today we're diving into what's really happening in the uranium market. And stick around until the end, we'll uncover a critical supply issue that could send prices soaring. Gary, thing number four, we're talking uranium. Uh, DKI, uh, as many of you probably know, uh, has talked about uranium quite a bit. Uh, we've seen this uh, energy use in AI, chip processing, the whole nine yards. Um, we're questioning some assumptions here, Gary, uh, regarding deep seek and what those projections look like and mean for uranium. Uh, Gary, thing number four, uh, we've seen uranium trading down over the last couple of weeks, even months. Uh, uranium price is down, but long-term outlook is strong. Uh, tell us some good, good news about uranium, Gary. Yeah, exactly. So the, the bad news is that the spot price over the last year or so has declined from about 106 per pound to $70 per pound. Um, $70 is not bad pricing, but it's certainly a big decrease from where we were. And then, you know, one of the things that really hurt pricing was deep seek uh, leading people for about 15 minutes to believe that we weren't going to need all of those AI data centers. We'll get to that. Um, you know, so there was this concern that nobody was going to need more power. Um, and there's also been geopolitical tension. You know, we do get a certain amount of enriched uranium from Russia. So that caused the U.S. to rely more on Canadian experts. Okay, so let's talk about some of this stuff. First of all, um, Canadian exports of uranium are not able to meet demand. Canadian producer Cameco has been intentionally underproducing for years. Cameco, they've got long-term supply contracts. They are actually uh, underproducing and then buying uranium in the spot market at a loss rather than produce more. Um, and then we have a bunch of nuclear plants where the useful life has been extended. There is a ton of construction and planned construction going on for new nuclear plants, for new um, SMRs, small modular reactors. There's all kinds of growth necessary because we do need more energy. And that's the case with or without AI data centers. So, you know, somebody might say, okay, well, wait a minute. If you have all of this demand, right, why is the price coming down? And the answer is two reasons. One, it takes a little while to get a nuclear plant you know, permitted, approved, to build it. So that demand is coming, but it isn't necessarily online yet. Um, and so, you know, that's that's a huge part of it. And then the other thing is there have been worldwide stockpiles. And so a few years ago, there were about five years of excess supply. That's down to about two years of excess supply. So start to do the math on this. Unless people start investing in building new mines and mining more, and right now nobody's doing that, um, we have shortfalls coming, right? Those, those stockpiles, we're living off the stockpiles. It's basically the commodity equivalent of living off your credit card. At some point, you need to make more money. At some point, we're not going to be able to draw down stockpiles that don't exist. And, you know, we're probably two years or less away from that. So, you know, there is a supply crunch coming and we want to be there for it. Uh, Gary, so I hear you, or I hear you that deep sea has affected the price of uranium, obviously with all the news and rollout there over the last month or so. Uh, do you think these new models though are really affecting uh, the demand of uranium or what? what's your take there? No, I don't. Uh, the deep sea news made people feel like you know, they had arrived at some sort of like that there was a free lunch, right? Okay, we've got a more efficient way to do it. But the truth is AI depends on massive amounts of computational power. And so somebody might say, well, wait a minute, but DeepSeek was able to train their model with a whole lot less power, a whole lot less training, a whole lot less expense, you know, fewer of the um, power hungry NVIDIA chips. And the answer to that is true, but sort of. And the reason is because they didn't fully train the model. It's an inference model. And so what happens is the, the Western models, things like, you know, Grok, XAI, ChatGPT, 
all of those models, what they do is an enormous amount of training. So the model is really ready to answer your question. What DeepSeek does is they figure out the things you're most likely to ask about and it researches that and gets a sense of where things are. But then when you submit a query, when you ask a question, DeepSeek takes more time, more power, more energy, more computational power to answer each query. So at the uh, NVIDIA meeting uh, a week ago, Jensen Hong was saying that because of DeepSeek, they're expecting 100x more GPU usage. Now, I don't know if that's accurate or not. I'm certainly not in a position to pretend I know more about this than he does. Um, but the point here is that with lower prices, there's going to be more demand. And even if the model switches from the current one, which is processor heavy at the beginning, processor light at the end, to the deep seek style inference models, that just means a longer period at the end of more power usage, more CPU usage or GPU usage. Um, basically, there's, there's no free lunch on this stuff. It's not that one model is necessarily more efficient than the other. It's they have greater power draws at different points in the model's life cycle. Very interesting, Gary, and thanks for breaking that down. Again, this is the version of the five things for this week called the slowing sales issue. Be sure to head to deepknowledgeinvesting.com, sign up for a free subscription, as well as a premium subscription if you'd like to upgrade and get access to all gated content, current recommendations, and buy and sell recommendations as well. Uh, or please just subscribe to us on YouTube, leave a comment, a uh, question that you might have for Gary. And we'll be sure to take a look at that and maybe even uh, show up in one week's version of the five things.